it seems, if we can read the signs of the times, not as prophets who know the future, but simply studying what is going on in culture, we might know what it looks like in our society for the propagation of the Christian gospel in the future. And it would appear the signs are telling us, uh-oh, you better get on it, Christian. May I ask you, what are you doing to participate in the Great Commission? Please know you can go because you've been sent, or if you don't want to go, you can stay and hold the rope for those who do. In other words, you can get out there and preach the gospel or support them in some way, shape, or form. Hold the rope for people who are willing to preach the gospel while we still can. So there was a dress designer that turned down Melania Trump to design her dress. She, she opted out. Um, do you think that she has the right to do that? Yeah. Yeah, why not? Do you think it's okay for her to do that? Yeah. You should be able to control your business in that regard, yeah. Okay. I mean, that's that, I guess that's that company's choice, right? I mean, it's a free market. That's what most conservatives want anyway, so. Do you think that she has the right to do that? The dress designer? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Oh, ma'am, you're going to be caught in a trap. What is he doing? He's using a story from American headlines the dressmaker for Mrs. Obama refused to make a dress for Mrs. Trump, and she was applauded by the left. It is totally within her rights to turn down somebody, to refuse to provide a service for somebody based on her personal convictions and beliefs. Now, this young man with the beard, who it seems to me must be a part of the young, restless, and reform movement because <laughs> they all wear beards, he's now going to go a step further to try to illuminate these young people and help them understand that their position is not exactly consistent. Listen very carefully to how he sets them up. So, you have the right to opt out of business that you might not want to associate yourself with? Yes. Okay. So if you were, let's say, a, a Muslim singer here in Madison and a church approached you for an Easter service for you to sing, do you have the right to opt out of that? Yes. Yeah, I mean, you have the, op you have the right to opt out of doing whatever you want. <sighs> I think, you, yeah, yeah, I think, I guess so. That seems like such an unusual circumstance that uh, they would want them, like that the Christian church would want to force a Muslim singer to sing at their church if they didn't want to. I would feel like if I was Muslim, I would, it would be hard to work with someone. Yeah, if that goes against your religious views, I feel like you have the right to turn that down. Yes, you do have the right to turn that down, unless, of course, there's a law that says you do not have religious liberty. There's actually a city ordinance that would allow those groups to sue you by opting out, by turning down their, their request. Do you think that's a good law? Probably not. So the law is saying what now? That the, that the Muslim singer can opt out? Can't opt out. Cannot opt out. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Well, that's what the law says? Yeah. <laughs> Do you think that's an okay law? I don't believe so, no. No, not at all. That's, I feel like that goes against people's rights. So pretty much, do you think that a law should exist that would force somebody to no. do the work? Absolutely not. <laughs> they are all on the tee, and they are now going to get hammered. So let's say you're a Christian photographer here in Madison, yeah. and someone approached you to do a same-sex wedding. Would, would that be hateful or discriminatory to opt out of that? I don't know. Do you have the right to do that? Um, in that situation, probably not because 
that would bring up some legal issues i would, I would suspect like that city ordinance right yes yeah the one that you so, didn't agree with yeah yeah bing bing <laughs> bing springs popping out of that kid's head and now to do a recreation of the sound effects right, that right. were made while that clip was running in the right. studio would yes. you be kind of that? <gasps> If it was switched to like Christian views or something, so they wouldn't be able to do that. And also, I don't know, I just think it should be like fair all around. I think it's very difficult to determine uh, what reason it is that you make that decision, unless you're very steadfast in your religion saying, no, this is wrong. Mm -hmm. In which case that's, yeah, you're a jerk for doing that. <laughs> so your political views, your ideas and kind of worldview is okay to say no to business, but your religious views aren't? No. That's such a sticky issue. Yeah, <laughs> it is when your worldview is inconsistent. What do we do with this well-orchestrated, well-crafted scenario that the Young, Restless, and Reform guy performed at the University of Wisconsin-Madison? I think we can use it but very, very carefully. If and we use a tactic like this to gotcha, zing, set you up, knocked you down, then I think we failed totally. You see, we can put a million pebbles in somebody's shoe and they can get a sore foot, but they will never get saved. Our goal, our agenda, in an encounter with somebody who is not a believer is not to one-up, to out-logic them. It is to lead them to the cross. So let's use this scenario. I think it was brilliantly done, but let's use it very, very carefully. Uh, now, the young restless and reform guy, apparently, asks a question that is gonna cause you to jump up and down screaming, pick me, pick me, I know the answer to this one, <laughs> pick me. Everyone agreed that a creative professional should have the foundational freedom to decline work that conflicts with their conscience and beliefs. But when faced with a situation that conflicts with current cultural expectations, like a Christian photographer declining to promote a same-sex wedding, the gears start grinding. If a law that forces someone to promote something that's against their beliefs is so laughable, so unimaginable, then why is it so difficult to extend that same freedom to a Christian creative professional? Because they're Christians. <laughs> this is a battle between light and darkness, which is why you don't see the feminists, the LGBTQ people going after Islam because they're basically on the same team. Darkness typically does not war against darkness, but it does war against the light, and we are seeing that increasingly. How lost and Hurting is our world. Take a look at this young man who paid a cosmetic surgeon $50,000 to transition into becoming a Martian. This young man apparently watched a sci-fi movie from the 1940s and concluded, that's what a Martian must look like. That's what I feel I am. He gathered up the funds and he persuaded a human being to take a scalpel to his face and transition him into looking like what we think a Martian might possibly look like, not to mention the society that embraces it. Our world is lost and our world is hurting and there is one solution, the gospel. Will you join us in rescuing the perishing?